Well, hello. I'm Micah from Brickle Brick Games. The following audio is a replay of a podcast that I used to produce and host with my good friend Dustin. Based on our readings and interpretations of fairy tales worldwide, the podcast Tales of Bedlam has since slipped into the past as well. So disregard any references to a website or announcements, but enjoy while you paint. Good night. Why are you pointing at me? Are we starting reading? I don't know. I... Are we going to say, welcome to Tales of Bedlam? That was very nice, Dustin. Thanks for opening us up. I'm your host, Micah. I'm Batman. And we lost Dustin. <laughs> Today we have a special story for you. To oh. welcome you into the new year. Happy New Year. Yeah. Did anybody guess? No. With Dustin's giveaway last week? I didn't give it away. I don't know. Spinning gold. There's all kinds of spinning gold stories. <laughs> I can think of at least five. Oh, yeah? Name those five. Well, no. Today we are going to read for you Rumple Stiltskin. What a word. Mm-hmm. Rumple Stiltskin. It might be a story you're pretty familiar with, but there's a few differences in the actual story that we're uh, reading to you today from the Brothers Grimm. There's a, a plot twist here and there. Mmm. I'm hungry already. We also want to just let you know that we're going to make a few changes here in the future. Starting on our next episode, Ooh. we're going to add different tales from different time periods, different parts of the world. Upgrade! We're not going to keep it to just Brothers Grimm because we enjoy fairy tales so much. We're going to introduce you to lots of fairy tales from all over the world. Oh, yeah. And that doesn't mean we won't finish. Oh, the we'll Grimm's, do more Grimm. But we're going to intersperse the Grim fairy tales with other tales from Russia, Bulgaria, Italy, France, Spain, America. Holy globalism. That's awesome. So stay tuned because we're going to have some really neat tales to share with you. We're also going to change the way we present the tales to you just a bit. We are. Mm -hmm. We've been told that a number of our listeners enjoy Dustin's exuberant excitement during tales that (laughs) he hasn't pre read. That's right. So from now on, I am preparing all the show notes. So if there's any colloquial. colloquialism or words that need to be explained or sayings that need some explanation I'm going to be researching that for you but Dustin's coming in cold turkey and reading and I'm going to say what the heck what that's not right so without further ado we present to you Rumple Stiltskin by the Brothers Grimm Dustin, take it Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm away. starting right. Rumpelstiltskin. Once there was a miller who was poor, oh, but oh. he had a beautiful daughter. Of course he did. So Here we go. Now it happened that he had to go and speak to the king, and in order to make himself appear important, he said to him, I have a daughter who can spin straw into gold. That was a dumb thing to tell people. Another fine example of good parenting. (laughs) Good grief. The king said to the miller, That is an art which pleases me well. If -hmm. your daughter is as clever as you say, bring her tomorrow to my palace and I will put her in the test. Sorry. To the test. Whatever. And when the girl was brought to him, he took her into a room which was quite full of straw, gave her a spinning wheel and a reel, Mm -hmm. and said, Now set to work, and if by tomorrow morning early you have not spun this straw into gold during the night, you must die. That was a little harsh. I don't remember this story being so harsh, but Mm. it is 
rather harsh. Man, I don't remember him threatening to kill people, but I guess uh, it's one way to get motivation. Thereupon, he himself locked up the room and left her in it alone. So there sat the poor miller's daughter, and for the life of her could not tell her what to do. <laughs> she had no idea how straw could be spun into gold, well, because it can't. And she grew more and more frightened, until at last she began to weep. Oh, no. But all at once the door opened, and in came a little man. He said, Good evening, Mistress Miller. Why are you crying so? Alas, answered the girl, I have to spin straw into gold, and I do not know how to do it. What will you give me, said the mannequin, if I do it for you? Why, my necklace said the girl. Weak. The little man took the necklace, seated himself in front of the wheel, and whirr, whirr, whirr. Three turns, and the reel was full, and he put another on, and whirr, whirr, whirr. Three times around, and the second one was full too. And so it went on until the morning, when all the straw was spun, and all the reels were full of gold. Wow. So what? So the reels that would have like maybe cotton, um, wool. Co oh, sorry, wool or flax. Flax, that's right. Um, string, I guess. Yeah. Right on it was oh, now yeah. just like string gold, gold from the hay. Sweet, huh? I don't know why he needs a necklace so he can spin his own gold. So technically, he's an alchemist. <clears throat> a really good one. You don't even have to have lead to turn the gold. It's an enchantment. He just takes grass. Alchemy's not real, sir. I think that there are some <laughs> things, some great knowledge that was lost to us. Mm -hmm. Burned up in the library of, at Alexandria. Do you the, really think, sir, that all the gold in the world and in Fort Knox, all that came from the ground? Yes. <laughs> or meteorites. Do you think it all was mined? Yes. By dwarves? By mannequins. <laughs> by daybreak, the king was already there, and when he saw the gold, he was astonished and delighted. Mm -hmm. But his heart became only more greedy. As it goes. He had the miller's daughter taken into another room full of straw, which was much larger, and commanded her to spin that also in one night if she valued her life. Where's the ding-dong father that got her into this? I guess he uh, ran off. He's out of the I picture. I guess he did. Shirk. This is a little bit too much for me. I think we should have a sponsor break. We love sponsor breaks. I love our sponsors, which, which just happen to be our bosses. Oh my gosh, this one is really long. Okay. At oh, are you going to start? Sure. Give it a go. As we begin a new year, let's take a moment to reflect on all the wonders we were introduced to in 2018. 18, 18. Bye bye, 2018. Through our amazing sponsors, Brickle Brit Inc. They're pretty amazing. The Brickle Brit Home Essentials Division brought us the e Easy Bake Witch Oven and the Sleeping Beauty Rest Mattress. Our dedicated team in the Farms Division delighted our taste buds with donkey cabbages, mm. rampion, mm. and juniper tree blood pudding. Blech. And just next door in the brewery, we had the very popular anti-death death drop. Yes, I remember that one. We ventured out in the world of publishing with Cats Are From Mars, Mice Are From Venus, and dabbled a bit in the matchmaking scene with our happily ever after dating service. For our slightly more active listeners, the Bricklebrit Adventure Team gave us the Many League Boots, the Supernatural Supply Satchel, and teamed up with our farms division for the Rooster Rompers. <laughs> the rooster Don't forget rompers. to shod your cock. Oh my god, here we go. Some of our biggest breakthroughs have come from our brilliant folks in the medical division. The Laser Assisted Eye Removal Insertion, L-A-E-R-I, or as we like to call it, Larry. For short. For short. And 
The self-cauterizing Orphic Toe Extractor, S-C-O-T-E, Scotty, also for short, have revolutionized their fields. And with that, we'd like to re-offer a free trial of our very first product released from the Brickle Brit Pharmaceutical Division. Oh my gosh, I remember what it was. Of course I did, I wrote this. <laughs> Tired of wicked stepmothers and dirts? Sure am. Do you constantly lose your golden ass to greedy gatekeepers? All the time. Uh, witches trying to cook you for feast day? I wish she would stop. <sighs> well, worry no more. For a very limited time, you can get a free trial of reality. Reality has been specially formulated to pull you out of your delusional fairy tale musings and allow you to regain a grip on the real world. Reality is easy to use and has been proven 93% effective in extensive clinical trials. Simply open the bottle and then pound it against your head until you wake up. Oh, you did that to me the first time. Or if you prefer, you can give a family member or close friend the satisfaction of administering your daily dose of reality. I'd be happy to administer your dose. (laughs) You do need to act fast. This free trial only available for a limited time. To get your free trial of reality, call us now at 1-800-BRUCKLEBRIT, which is 417-501-4681. And side effects may include headaches, fatigue, getting a job, and diarrhea. (laughs) Now let's get back to reality. (laughs) Oh, that was a fun one. And finish our story. So, this is the Second second night. Bigger room. That the poor... Miller's daughter has to spin straw mm-hmm. into gold, and she's got more straw in a larger room. Mm-hmm. Same amount of time. And the father is just gone. And the king is still threatening her life. <sighs> oh, man. So, Dustin, let's finish this. Let's, let's get this done. The girl n- knew not how to help herself and was crying. <laughs> When the door opened again, and the little man appeared and said, What will you give me if I spin that straw into gold for you? I'll give you my virginity. Whoa! I mean, the ring on my finger, answered the girl. What the heck happened? The little man took the ring, again began to turn the wheel, and by morning had spun all the straw into glittering gold. This guy's handy to have around. The king rejoiced beyond measure at the sight but still, he had not gold enough. Is it ever enough? He had a dragon heart. It wasn't good. And he had the miller's daughter taken into a still larger room full of straw and said, You must spin this too in the course of this night, but if you succeed, you shall be my wife. Even if she be a miller's daughter, thought he, I could not find a richer wife in the whole of Kentucky. I mean, I mean the world. So, who could these forced marriages again? What if, uh, I think I was sure I'd just die. (laughs) That's terrible. But But she doesn't want to marry this jerk. No, but I don't know if it's worth death. Yeah. I mean, at least she will be a queen. Whatever. I mean, she'll be taken care of. Consent, sir. They're obviously rich. I know. I'm not saying it's right, Dustin. Don't get me wrong. But what choice does she have? Death? <laughs> I just gave you the choice. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I don't it's a little think it's a good choice, Dustin. <laughs> we'll see if it works out for him. When the girl was alone, the mannequin came again for the third time and said, What will you give me if I spin this straw? For you this time also. Well, I've already given up my virginity, so I'm oh not sure God. what left I have. That's not till later. She's oh, not married yet. Sorry. I have nothing left that I could give, answered the girl. Then promise me, if you should become queen, to give me your first child. <laughs> Who knows whether that will ever happen? thought the miller's daughter, and not knowing how else to help herself in this strait, she promised the mannequin what he wanted, 
and for that he once more spun the straw into gold. And now we're just giving away kids. And when the king came in the morning and found all he had wished, he took her in marriage, and the pretty miller's daughter became a queen. The end. And they lived happily ever after. What? No? No. Oh, there's more? There's more. Hmm. A year after, she brought a beautiful child into the world, and she never gave a thought to the mannequin. Seemed like a pretty important thing to forget. <laughs> but suddenly, he came to her in a room and said, Now give me what you promised. The queen was horror struck and offered the mannequin all the riches of the kingdom if he would leave her the child. But the mannequin said, No. Something alive is dearer to me than all the treasures in the world. Something alive? That's Cre all? It's creepy. could she just give him a... A frog? A peasant's child? Yeah, she was the queen. A consent doesn't apparently matter in this place, so just grab some kid and throw it at him. Exactly. Then the queen began to lament and cry so that the mannequin pitied her. I will give you three days' time, said he. If by that time you find out my name, then you shall keep your child. What an odd challenge, don't you think? Guess my name. Yeah. What's in my pocket? I don't know. <laughs> so the <laughs> queen thought the whole night of all the names she had ever heard, and she sent a messenger over the country to inquire far and wide for oh any gosh. other names that there might be. When the mannequin came the next day, she began with Caspar. Mm, Caspar? Caspar, yeah. Melchior. Nikiar. Makar. Bakukar. Balthazar. 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 That's out of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure Melchior is in the Bible, too. I don't know that one. And said all the names she knew, one after another. But to every one, the little man said, That is not my name. So she's just it's infinite guesses for three days, right? I guess so. Uh, I mean, you just go through Nick, yeah. Sandy, Sally. Oh, I guess I'm, those are girl names. Yeah, guy who's names. Saying, you just name every doesn't... name you possibly know. Yeah. Mike, Mark. Balthazar. Mickle, Mecca, Mako, Maka, Mika, Mika, Moka. Okie dokie. On the second day, she had inquiries made into the neighborhood as to the names of the people there. Mm -hmm. And she repeated to the mannequin the most uncommon and curious. Don't you think he would have started with those? Yeah. I don't think he would be... Bill? Yeah, exactly. John, John Smith. John, Jonathan, Johnny, Jack. I love this name. <laughs> Perhaps your name is Short Ribs. Mmm. Mm, yummy. Or Sheepshanks. Mmm. Mm. I don't understand this one. Mm. Lace Leg. Maybe he was a pretty little mannequin. Lace Leg. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but he always answered, That is not my name. Why did he give her three days? I don't know. I he, guess he's he pretty took, solid thinking that no one would guess He took pity it. on her? I don't know. He's awfully demanding little imp, and then but then he has pity. I think he's just goofing with her. He's just messing around because hmm. he's a jerk. Where's the dad? On the third day, Sorry. the messenger came back again and said, I have not been able to find a single new name. But as I came to a high mountain at the east of the forest, where the fox and the hare bid each other good night. What? That was weird. I Maybe that means that's where the sun sets. The fox and the hare? Bid each other good night. Okay. There I saw a little house, and before the house a fire was burning, and round about the fire quite a ridiculous little man was jumping. He hopped upon one leg and shouted, Today I bake, tomorrow brew, the next I'll have the queen's child. Ha! Glad I am that no one knew 
that Rumpelstiltskin. I am styled. 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 Named. Is that another word for named? Yeah. It's like a stylus you write with it. Named it. Write it. Named it. Okay. Written. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. You may imagine how glad the king, the king, the what? The king. You may imagine how glad the queen was when she heard the name. And when soon afterwards, the little man came in and asked, Now, Mistress Queen, what is my name? At first she said, <laughs> She's being coy. Is your name Conrad? No. Is your name Harry? <laughs> just, just random names. No. Perhaps your name is Rumpelstiltskin. Oh, the devil has told you that. The devil has told you that, cried the little man, and in his anger he plunged his right foot so deep into the earth that his whole leg went in. And then in a rage, as he pulled at his leg so hard with both hands that he tore himself in two. <laughs> and that is the story of Rumpelstiltskin, people. Wow. He just ripped himself in half. <laughs> so he had a hissy fit and was a, killed himself. A pretty big hissy fit. Why was he running around in front of a fire, jumping and shouting his name? He wasn't a very smart little mannequin. He was pretty pretty proud of himself. He was going to take the queen's child. Well, he child, hadn't won yet. Which they never said was a boy or a girl, mm, did they? Just a child. Just a beautiful child. That's odd. They didn't say. They just said a beautiful child. That's hmm. that's what you find odd about the story. <laughs> <laughs> Not the spinning of gold or the ripping of or bodies the, in half. The father that says, hey, my daughter can spin straw into gold and then disappears. Or where's the king at during this yeah, whole time? The Couldn't whole... he just have that little yeah. munchkin seized and split in half himself? Barbecue him or something? I don't know. Barbecue? Yeah, he was kind of evil. barbecue. That's what they did. They just burned mm. people alive, right? It's a little uh. barbecue sauce on a mm. little munchkin. You've gone off the rails. Could you imagine the legs? <sighs> oh, delicious. Gross. I was hungry. After short ribs and sheep shank, but now I'm sick. I want a little bit of that leg lace. <laughs> leg lace. <laughs> We're done with this. Story's over. Ripped himself in half. The end. Thank you for listening to our story or the Brothers Grimm story. Don't forget to leave us a voice message. What you think about leg lace or barbecued munchkins at 417-501-4681. That's 417-501-4681. You can leave a message and you'll be on air. Woohoo! As soon as we listen to it, edit it, and put it on the next podcast. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye. <laughs>